So where an injective linear transformation is one that sends different inputs to different outputs. A surjective, sometimes also called an onto linear transformation, is one where every single vector in the codomain is the image of some vector from the domain. So every vector in the codomain is getting hit, if you like, um, by the, the image of something from the domain. So let's take a quick look um, at what it might mean to be a surjective linear transformation. I'm going to go back to the cats once again. So this, oops, here we go. Um, so this linear transformation that takes my image vectors over here, my sorry, my domain vectors v and w, and it maps them to this um, combination of the vectors. So my standard matrix here is 2, 1, 1, minus 2. When I read uh, over here on the left, you can see it. Um, that it looks like there is nowhere inside of the codomain that I can't get to as the image of something from my domain. Right. So in this case, it looks like we have a linear transformation whose image is the entirety of the codomain space. And that is exactly the situation in which we say we have a surjective linear transformation. So another way to think about what surjective means is it means that the range, the image rather, is the same thing as the codomain. That everything which this thing could spit out as an output, it does spit out as an output. And another way to think about that is that no matter what right-hand side I put on the other side of t of v, t of v equals b, no matter what b that I put on the right-hand side of that equation, I'm going to get a consistent equation. I'm going to be able to solve for v, because with every b, there's associated at least one v from the domain if I have an onto linear transformation. So just to look at an example or two to get us warmed up on this idea, <clears throat> uh, let's take the this example where I have a transformation that takes x and a y and produces for me x, y, 0. So it just takes whatever I give it, and it sticks a 0 as the z coordinate. Is this going to be a surjective transformation? And so the question is, will I always get a consistent vector equation, excuse me, with the standard matrix of this transformation on the left-hand side? And so let's just talk about this piece together. Do we think that we're always going to get a consistent equation for a standard matrix that looks like this, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0? So if I were to make an augmented matrix out of this, and if I decided, for whatever reason, that the right-hand side that I put on my augmented matrix was, oh, I don't know, um, let's say it was 7, 12, 9, or something like that. So if this were my augmented matrix, well, you could imagine what would happen if I did the row operations on this. In fact, we don't need to do any row operations. It's already in its reduced row echelon form, uh, except I suppose we would divide the third row by 9. But the point is that this bottom row here is going to end up giving me a contradiction unless I just so happen to have a 0 in this entry. right? And so, as you just said, one of the ways to think about this is that it's not possible for this transformation to output anything that has a non-zero z coordinate. Right? Everything this spits out has a zero z coordinate. So I can't put something with a non-zero z coordinate on the right-hand side of this equation and get a consistent system. So, for example, this is not a surjective linear transformation because t of any x, y is never going to be equal to the vector 1, 1, 1. Right? If I put 1, 1, 1 on the right-hand side, I'm going to get an inconsistent equation, x, y, 0 equals 1, 1, 1. So this is not a surjective transformation for that reason. What I'd like for you to do with your groups uh, next is to consider this example that we assessed before for injectivity. We, we figured out that this was a one-to-one -one linear transformation, an injective linear transformation. Um, this is the one where we take x, y, z, and we just throw away the z coordinate and give us back the two-dimensional vector x, y. Um, take five minutes with your group and argue for whether or not this is a surjective linear transformation. Uh, so let's do that piece for five minutes in our breakouts and then come back and discuss. This linear transformation is surjective because I can solve t of x, y, z equals a, b. No matter what a and b that I choose um, can be solved 
by x, y, z just being you know a, b, anything. So as you said in, in your write-up, um, write it out here, x, y, z equals a, b, anything. It doesn't matter what we put in that third column, or that third entry, because it's just going to get thrown away, right? Um, and so we could do AB42, we could do AB17, ABPi, AB0, whatever. Um, no matter what A and B that I choose, I can solve this. I get a consistent equation. I get a consistent equation for any right-hand side that I could choose. Yeah. So what do we think is the connection with the standard matrix here? How can the standard matrix tell me whether something is surjective? It needs to be able to somehow tell me whether this right-hand side, or whether I always get a consistent equation no matter what right-hand side I choose, or whether it's going to be possible to get an inconsistent equation if I pick the wrong right-hand side. So what feature of the standard matrix is going to tell me? So whenever my standard matrix in its reduced row echelon form has a row of all zeros, and even one row of all zeros, as this example does, that right there is a problem. That's immediately going to tell me that my transformation is not surjective. So if the standard matrix of T has zero rows in its RREF, then we know for sure that T is not going to be surjective. But remember, having a zero row in the reduced row echelon form is the same thing as having a row that doesn't contain a pivot, non-pivot rows in its RREF then T is not a surjective linear transformation. So if we sort of take stock about injective and surjective, injective said, if we have no non-pivot columns, so if all of my columns have pivots, then my linear transformation is injective. And then for surjective, we say that if all of my columns, sorry, if all of my rows have pivots, then my transformation is surjective. So, pivot in every column tells me injective, and pivot in every row tells me surjective. So to finish this discussion, mm, okay. imagine a situation in which both of these things are true. Both it's injective. Objective. Say again? Bijective. Bijective, exactly. Bijective. And in a bijective linear transformation, we would have a pivot in every row and every column. And so if I have a pivot in every row and every column, what is the reduced row echelon form of my matrix going to look like? My standard matrix. Um, it's going to be like n by n, and the diagonal is going to be uh, a bunch of ones. And then everything yeah. else is yes and of course i'm feverishly trying to write up the latex code for that very thing right here yes the reduced row echelon form of a matrix that has a pivot in every row and also a pivot in every column is going to be a matrix that has ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else that's the reduced row echelon form of a matrix that is both injective and surjective in particular what does this tell me about my matrix? What kinds of matrices can have this reduced row echelon form? All such matrices must be what? Square. They need to be square. What do you mean by square? Same number of rows and columns. Yeah. Because remember, every row can have at most one pivot. Every column can have at most one pivot. And so if every row and every column has a pivot, that means we have the same number of rows as we have columns. And so the only way that we can have a bijective linear transformation is to have one where the domain and the codomain have the same dimension, so that the standard matrix can have the same number of rows as it has columns. So all those matrices must be square. But again, not every square matrix is going to have this property. But every matrix that has this property necessarily must be a square matrix. Um, and why we like bijective linear transformations so again, the reason that we should like bijective linear transformations um, is it has to, again, once again, it has to do with the nature of the solutions to the equation T 
of x is equal to some right-hand side. And the nature of those solutions, if I have an injective linear transformation, it tells me that if a solution exists, then it is unique. And the fact that my transformation is surjective tells me that a solution always exists for any b. And so when I add both of those things together, it tells me that a unique solution always exists by ejective. Tells me a unique solution exists for any b, or for all b, however you like to say that. And this here is the magic sauce. This is like our favorite kind of linear transformation. Uh, is one in which a unique solution exists no matter what right-hand side that I put on here. So if I give you a B, you can give me a unique X that's associated with it, and vice versa if I give you an X that's associated with exactly one B. Right? So every all the different Xs in the domain get associated with different Bs in the codomain, and all the different Bs that are a part of the codomain get associated with different Xs that are a part of the, uh, of the domain. Um, and so when I solve this equation, I can just invert this linear transformation. And so that's the real upshot here, is we say that t is invertible. In other words, there exists a linear transformation, let's call it u, from the codomain, from the original codomain of the original transformation back to the domain of the original transformation, such that t applied to u of x, uh, let's not call it x, let's call it uh, b, t of u of b is equal to b, and u applied to t of b, uh, t of x is equal to x. There is a transformation that exactly undoes whatever t does. Uh, and this is, again, the other big reason that we care about bijective linear transformations, uh, is that they are the ones that give us enough information to exactly undo whatever they happen to do, is that we have an invertible transformation.